Welcome back. In this grammar section, we'll be talking about articles and agreement. So let's start with the definite article the. There are many different ways in which we use the definite article the. However, for the IELTS essay, I will only mention the most relevant rules. The main thing that you need to know about using this article is that we use the when the reader knows exactly to whom or what we are referring. So let's look at the different scenarios in which the reader may know to whom or to what we are referring. So firstly, we use the when we're mentioning something again. For example, I planted a tree in my garden. The tree is now big. Notice that we use the word the here. The reason for this is that we've already mentioned which tree we're talking about. The tree has already been mentioned in the previous sentence. So we already know to whom or to what we are referring. We also use the with superlative adjectives. Superlative adjectives are basically words like highest, lowest, best, worst, fastest, quickest, slowest, and so on. We'll talk more about superlative adjectives when we get to the vocabulary section of this course. So here's our example. China had the highest growth rate. So notice that because we have a superlative adjective here, highest, we have to use the. We also use the when we're making a statement about all things referred to by a singular countable noun. So here we have a sentence. The dolphin is a very intelligent animal. So in this case, the singular countable noun is dolphin. So when we say a sentence like this, the dolphin is a very intelligent animal, we're basically making a statement about all things, okay, about all dolphins. We're not saying that one particular dolphin is intelligent. We're saying that all dolphins are intelligent. So by using the in this sentence, we have generalized what all dolphins are like. All dolphins are very intelligent. We also use the when we're talking about certain groups of people. For example, the elderly, the poor, the wealthy, the employed, and so on. Finally, we use the if the figure is an important part of a noun phrase. So here we have a sentence. The number of mangoes sold in Britain was surprisingly high. So in this case, number of mangoes is the noun phrase. So when we have a noun phrase, we have to use the word the. Now let's talk about the articles a uh, and an. Now, similar to the definite article the, there are numerous rules to using the indefinite articles a uh, and an. So again, for the purpose of the IELTS essays, I'll only be discussing the rules which are the most relevant. So the main thing that you need to know about these indefinite articles is that you have to use a uh, or an with singular countable nouns. And we use them with these singular countable nouns when the reader does not know exactly to whom or to what we are referring. Okay, so keep in mind, the reader does not exactly know to whom or to what we are referring. So let's look at some examples of that. We can use these articles to show that something or someone is part of a group. For example, we could say there is a way to prevent crime rates from rising. Now here, we're talking about one way. Okay, notice that this is just one way out of several. Why is this part of a group? Because there are many different ways. There isn't just one way. However, we're just talking about one way. Next, we could also use these indefinite articles if we're referring to all things of the same kind. So here's an example of that. A teacher has the responsibility of educating our children. So notice, here we use the indefinite article a uh, with teacher. Now take note that we're not talking about any one specific teacher. We're talking about all teachers. What we're really saying is that all teachers have the responsibility of educating our children. So here, we have used a teacher to refer to all teachers. Next, you should not be using a or an if you're referring to uncountable nouns or plurals. For example, the price of oil stabilized by January. Note that here, the word oil is an uncountable noun. We cannot count oil. Here's another example. There are many Italians living in New York. In this case, the word Italians is plural. So since we have a plural noun here, we cannot use any indefinite articles with it. Now let's talk about subject and verb agreement. When you're writing your sentence, you have to make sure that your subjects and verbs agree with each other in number. 
So what that means is that if your subject is singular, then the verb must also be singular. If the subject is plural, then the verb must also be plural. Let's look at some examples of that. On the left-hand side, we have the incorrect sentences. And on the right-hand side, we have the correct sentences. So here's the incorrect sentence. Future discoveries is based on past knowledge. Why is this wrong? Because here we have a verb, is, which does not agree with the subject, discoveries. Notice that the subject, discoveries, is plural, whereas the verb is singular. So in order to correct that, we have to write, future discoveries are based on past knowledge. The is has to be changed to are, because discoveries is plural. Here's another example. People improve their life by learning from their past mistakes. Notice that the word people is plural, whereas the verb improves is singular. So to correct this sentence, you have to write, people improve their life by learning from their past mistakes. People is plural, therefore the verb improve also has to be plural. Here's our last example. Reflecting on our past help us to make better decisions. I want you to note that the subject reflecting on our past is singular, whereas the verb help is plural. So to correct this sentence, we have to change the verb help to helps. The correct sentence would read, reflecting on our past helps us to make better decisions. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next grammar section in which we'll talk about active versus the passive voice.